hold, but God's hand's the best hand. And uh, if, you hold, if you're not holding on to his hand, uh, you need to get a hold to it, as my grandma would say. Get a hold to it. And then hold on. Because God's hand is unchanging. We can depend on a lot of things to hold on to, but God's hand is the best. Amen. We thank the Lord for his mighty working hand. He's got a beautiful hand. He made, he made the world with a span of his hand. And uh, when you've got God's hand, you've got the best. Everybody all right this morning? It, it's the, uh, the faithful few, a few people here. Uh, a lot of folk missing, and that's okay. One of the good things uh, I was noticing, and I could, I could tell who was here today, because I could hear certain voices. I know where Lucretia was sitting, because I could hear her voice. <laughs> you know, she's got a beautiful voice, and I know well, Lucretia sitting right over here. Normally she over there, Sister Helen normally sits here, but then I heard, I heard her, and I thought, oh, that should go over there today. And so I could just distinguish folk from sound. All right, you be around folk long enough, you can kind of know where they at when they begin, especially when they begin to sing. Amen. Amen. And uh, we, we're going to worship God in spirit and truth, continue our worship where two or three are gathered. Yeah. And that's all you need. Yeah. All you need is two or three. And that's what we have today with a few more uh, to add. Let us... Uh, Make sure we take our mind off of the ribs and stuff. We're supposed to fix them all. And they'll take care of themselves. We'll be all right, you know. Uh, I'll tell you a quick secret. So you won't have to sit under the fire too long tomorrow. Uh, boil them first tonight. And then just throw them on the grill. And in about 10, 10, 10 minutes, you'll be done. You won't have to be sitting out there with all the fire in your eye. And your eye all switched all up. Everything smelling like a whole lot of smoke. You, you, that'll save you a little bit of time. And if you need macaroni and cheese, we got plenty. Carl, don't want no more macaroni and cheese. He might tell us to, you know, give you some on the way home today to get rid of. You got a whole pantry full. Uh, he asked for some last week, and then y'all brought, that's all everybody brought. So, uh, you, you know, he might give you a little a couple boxes. That'll save you something, too. So, we, you know, it'll be all right today. It's going to be all right. So let us have a mind consecrated on the Lord for the next few moments. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for yet another day. Uh, we are about to celebrate a Memorial Day tomorrow, and uh, the, the greatest memorial of all time is the memorial of Christ who uh, gave his life for us. Uh, we know that many service men and women have done so throughout the years, uh, but we're just thankful for the memorial of Christ that we can celebrate not only today, but every day in our lives, and what he means to us in the sacrifice that he made for us. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for the opportunity to rest and have relaxation. For most of us who will be off tomorrow, that we can uh, take some time to slow down a little bit and uh, give some attention to you throughout another day in our busy and hectic week. As your word goes forth today, may it minister to the hearts of your people to encourage us, to strengthen us in our most holy faith, to build us up where we're torn down, and to strengthen us where we're weak, uh, that we might uh, not only have the courage, but the wherewithal, the strength, and the desire and passion, Lord, to serve you each and every day of our lives. We give you glory, honor, and praise. All of God's people say, Amen. 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 We're going to look at faith a little bit today um, from a different perspective uh, than usual. Uh, uh, but uh, the Lord will bless us just the same. I want to tell you a story about little Johnny. Uh, before I tell you the story about little Johnny, I have a couple things I need to say. Um, 
you know, I, 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 I'm on a water thing and, and everybody's bringing me water. Because of my issues I had several weeks ago. With that water comes a whole lot of frequent visits to the restroom. <laughs> when you get past 40, that bladder don't work too well like it used to. If you see me run out here and run to the, to the back real quick, uh, you know, Tanya just get up and sing a song until I get back. Uh, but I drank a little water today because I know I'm going to get fussed at if I don't. But I couldn't drink too much because I, you know, I'd be preaching from the bathroom. Y'all don't want to hear them noises in there. Because when I forget to turn the mic off, and it'll be an issue. Uh, but uh, 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 I can't wear my dress shoes. You know, I, I was going to wear my shoes like Floyd got today, but I couldn't get them on my feet. Because all the water uh, fluids I had on me, Sister Pat, uh, you know, most of it's gone, but it's, it's, my feet are still kind of swollen. And, uh, and I'm on a water pill, so that's another issue. I'm trying to time that up so that I can kind of maneuver through that. And uh, so I, I don't have my dress shoes on today. Uh, uh, so I, I, I wore them like sandals until I had to get up here. I didn't walk around with my feet hanging off my shoes to offend nobody. But uh, if I get to moving a little bit and shouting, it may not be the spirit, it may be called my feet hurt. My feet hurt right now, and so I don't know how this is going to work out today. Uh, but uh, w w w whatever, whatever happened, I might have to kick them off. Take off my shoes, you're on holy ground right now. Okay, I might have to do a Moses up in here, walk around barefooted, amen? At the burning bush, yes indeed. <laughs> my feet are hurting. Brother Yukon will be here tonight. I'm going to take them all off tonight. By, by the time we get to night, Yukon, my feet are going to be in trouble. So I'll be sitting there. Might have to bring, bring something to prop my feet up. But we'll be okay. We'll be, we will be okay. Let me tell you a story about little Johnny. Little Johnny uh, loved to fish. And uh, I think Brother Walt and I will go tomorrow. Uh, unless Tish put the clamps on him. But um, he loved to go fishing. And he'd go fishing with his dad, but he couldn't ever catch anything. So uh, they were going to go fishing uh, tomorrow, and he began to pray to God. God, I really want to catch some fish with my dad tomorrow. And, and just, uh, you, know, you know, answer the prayer for us to have a good day at the fishing hole tomorrow. And so I uh, woke up and it was raining cats and dogs, torrential downpour throughout the night and most of the morning. And little Johnny was frustrated. He said, you know, God, I ask you to bless us with a day so we can go fishing because I wanted to enjoy time with my father. And so the dad says, well, we're going to go anyway. Uh, by the time we get to the fishing hole, maybe the rain will stop. And sure enough, they got to the fishing hole and the rain had stopped. The little boy threw his rod into the water, and as soon as it hit the water, bam, the fish jumped on the line, and he was able to reel it out, and uh, he had a, hit a fish. Well, no, he had a big fish. Any of y'all been fishing, you know, it's a fish story. He had a big fish. Okay. <laughs> And uh, they kept getting fish after fish after fish. They got a bucket full of fish and went home. And, and, and the little boy on his way home says, uh, you know, I, I feel I'm embarrassed because I had prayed to God. And, and it rained and it rained. And the dad says, you know what, son? God answered your prayer because the rain pushed all the bugs down and pushed them on the top of the lake. And the fish normally would be at the bottom of the lake, but saw all that food at the top of the lake on the, on the surface of the water and began to eat the, 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 the bugs. And in doing so, your worm became even more attractive to them, and they clamped on the worm, and, and, and that's how we got our bounty. And, and he says, I'm so embarrassed that I didn't know that. 
And some of us should be embarrassed, too, about how we pray to God. Because we don't always see past the storm and what's going to happen after the storm that God has prepared for us. See, see, we pray to God and it don't happen now. We got an issue. And, 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 and to some of us, there is a storm in our lives. And we can't see what's going to happen past the storm. The boy couldn't see that the storm actually served the purpose of God to answer his prayer, but he couldn't see that because the, he, had his, he, he, had a, he had a wrong view of the problem. And, and, and some, some of us sometimes have the wrong view of the storm in our lives that we can't see beyond the blessing of the storm. And so, as we look at the definition of faith, what is it? Say it with me. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You don't always see what's about to happen. But, but the Bible encourages us that we have a hope for what we're praying for. And though we don't see it, there needs to be a faith that is going to be all right after the storm. And so... The little boy learned a lesson, and it's a great lesson for us today. Uh, you may not see it, but it doesn't mean it's not worth it. In the name of Jesus. Uh, I want you to turn to one of my favorite characters in Scripture that's going to teach us about some faith today. And if you will turn to Joshua chapter 2, my grandma will say Joshua. Joshua chapter 2, okay? Joshua judges Ruth, okay? Uh, not too far past uh, the, the books of the law. Chapter 2 of Joshua. If you have it, say amen. Chapter 2, verse 1. Lord, I may ask you to help me out some here. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia, Crow, to spy secretly. See, you don't have to tell everybody all your business, but something you can keep to yourself. And uh, jo Joshua did this, and it wasn't everybody's business, because they always everybody. Been. But I know in the world of social media, we got to post everything. You understand? I mean, I'm t the, the, those old folk probably don't do that as much. Uh, 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 but everything is posted now. You know, if you're at a restaurant, you won't post your plate. <laughs> so you can sh show it on Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Okay? But something, everybody don't need to know all your stuff. Okay, and, and, and uh, Joshua secretly sent out a couple spies uh, to spy, to, to check out the land, especially Jericho. Uh, there's a lot of things that God may have planned for us, but there's sometimes he want to be real specific. Okay, and we get caught up in 15,000 things about doing this, doing this, and doing that. Sometimes we just have to focus on one thing. And, 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 and Joshua says, just, just take care of Jericho. There's a lot of land we've got to conquer for the Lord. But for right now, just focus on one. And Jericho was that city. All right? And uh, so they went and came to the house of the prostitute named Rahab. Ooh. Oh. And they lodged there. Uh, Airbnb was not working back then, so they found refuge with the prostitute Rahab. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out 
the men who have come to you who have entered your house for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. There comes a time when there's some things in our life that we want to hide. Okay. And God can do what he want to do when he want to do it with whom he wants. Rahab happens to be the one he picks in this particular story. A prostitute who gave two of God's men refuge and hid them. You got some things in your life you've been hiding? Some things in your life that you don't want known, don't need to be known, but God has a way of using even that when you turn it over to him for his glory. Okay? Now, this woman, in her occupation, knew how to hide men. Hello, somebody. Uh, she was good at that. Okay? Now, she didn't always make the right decisions, obviously, but when it comes to hiding something, she knew how to hide. hide okay? And so she took these two men. It wasn't nothing to, to hide them. Hit them on up. Uh, so that they uh, wouldn't be fine. So she said, yes, the men came to me, but I don't know where, they're, where they were from. Okay? Now, she tells a lie. So we got a prostitute who tells a lie. Okay? And God's going to use this for his glory. Okay? Now, God can do what he want to do. Okay? Before you start trying to figure out God and why he did this one, just know that in Isaiah 55, 89, the Bible says, For your thoughts are not God's thoughts, neither your ways his ways, as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are your thoughts from his thoughts, and your ways from his ways. Quit trying to figure God out, because you, you, you can't play that. You can't go there. That's number one. Now, when there is an issue when you've got two sins involved, okay, here is the deal. The one that benefits the kingdom of God is the one you do. In other words, if she tells the truth, Israel is destroyed. The kingdom is destroyed because Joshua and Caleb are, are, are gone. Okay? And all of what God has in store is no longer in effect. Don't want that. But to lie and, and, and not tell where they're at, to save them and to save the kingdom of God, well, she picks the right one. God uses the lie to benefit his kingdom. Okay? Y'all missed it. I understand. Now, it's hard to try to tell the little lambs this story. Okay? All right? Because, first of all, we got to talk about a prostitute. And they, they go, you're going to drive them crazy. And then there's the lie to deal with. So we have to save this story till they become mature saints. Okay? And so and you ain't going to find any little lambs and primaries and junior lessons on Red Hat. That's too much. Okay? That's too much for some of us anyway. Okay? But let alone the your little youngins. Okay? I understand that. But as we grow our faith, we, we, we get to know that God is sovereign and he has a reason for what he does. I don't know if that helped anybody, uh, but th th that's, the, that's the story. Okay? So she had hidden, hid the men. Uh, and I want to drop to verse 9. Okay? Boy, if you read verse 9 for me, if you can, please. Chapter 2, verse 9 of Joshua. Men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, 
and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Okay, now, let me give you a little background here. These are the same folk that 40 years ago Israel was afraid of. Remember the, ten, the 12 spies went out? Ten of them came back and said, oh, those people are too big. We can't do nothing with them. Okay? Joshua came back, Joshua and Caleb came back and said, our God is bigger than any problem we got. And I want you to know God's bigger than any problem you got today as well. Okay? And the ten spies says, oh, we can't do this. So they didn't go and to walk around in the wilderness wanderings for 40 years until the generation died out. Now it's time to enter the land. Now, Joshua's in charge now. And see, he was, he was the one who came back with the group report. So God now is ready to use him 40 years later. Okay? Now, the same folk that Israel was afraid of 40 years ago was the same people that was afraid of Israel 40 years. See, sometimes folk you run from, God then already took care of it. You scared of folk and they ain't more scared of you. Amen, walls and electric lights. Okay? But why were they were afraid? Why were they afraid of Israel? Verse 10, read, Floyd. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Okay, so these big old giants and all these folk that Israel was afraid of, these same people, Sister Debbie, were like, oh man, I sure hope he don't come this way. Because they'll do to us what, what, what they've done to these kings. And we know about the Red Sea. Okay? Now this was 40 years before. The people were still talking about what God had done in their lives. Okay? And so, so who, who got a testimony today? Who can talk about the goodness of God this morning? Okay? It may be 40 years ago. Right? What God did for you You've got a testimony. And so God's reputation had preceded the children of Israel and these people that they were afraid of were more afraid of Israel than Israel was of them. Okay? Now I want you to know that God has got, you're going to make your enemies your footstool. All them folks that you got some issues with and problems with, God did already took care of it, Pat. He done took care of it already. All you got to do is be faithful and do what he says. And he will take care of it. The folk had melted their hearts. Okay? Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and beneath the earth. Let me ask you a question. Does your enemy know more about your God than you? Does your enemy know about God's goodness more than you know about it? Can they testify about God's goodness more than you can? God's got a reputation that's everlasting to everlasting. And these ungodly people could testify, we know what kind of God y'all got. And sometimes non-Christians can have more faith in God than we have in our, our own God ourselves. And, and, and that is our shame. Okay? Uh, that's God's reputation. We know God is good. And we know uh, and can see God's goodness and power and might. That's his reputation. Let me ask you about your reputation. Okay. Uh, what's your reputation? All we see is the church here. But what's your reputation when you walk out this place? I'm going to turn around and not look at anybody. 
What's your reputation when you walk out of here? Uh, how big is the gap from your reputation in this place and then when you get home and when you get on your job? How different is that? How inconsistent is it? Because when you're in here, everybody home. What happens when you walk out this place? Yeah, hello, somebody. Amen, walls and electric lights. God's reputation. And we have to be reminded sometimes of what God has done in our lives and what he continues to do for us every day. God's reputation is basis for my faith in him. Okay? And you need to know God for yourself. It's all right to hear the stories of grandma and auntie and mom and dad about how God is so good to them. But at some point, you need to have your own testimony. You need to know God in a personal way. Because there will come a time when you're going to need it for yourself. If you solely depend on the testimony of other folk, uh, you will never have your own testimony. And you can allow for somebody else's view of God to drive you out to church. And, and that's why you need your own. Okay? The old commercial said, brother, you got to get your own. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't borrow my CD. You got to get your own. All right? Uh, so we, we see God working. I tell the young people all the time. At some point, you're going to have to have God for yourself. Right now, you're piggybacking on mom and daddy's faith. They make you come to church. But one of these days, real soon, when you're not at home, when you're on a college campus, at your apartment in another city, somewhere, uh, when mom and daddy ain't there, uh, you don't need your own faith. Because mama and daddy won't be there to make you go. And you need to have your own. Is that all right? We know. That, 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 that God is faithful. He is faithful to his promises and to his words. Uh, we see how uh, we see how to exercise our faith over and over again. Just like God responds in our lives over and over again. God gave you mercy over and over again. He woke you up over and over again. He gave you another day over and over again. He heard your cry over and over again. He gave you grace over and over again. He forgave you for that same old sin you've been doing over and over again. Because of that, you ought to love him over and over again. Ted, where you at? Stand up, Ted. Ted, where you at? Where you at, Ted? Where's Ted? Come on, Ted. Stand on up. Lead us in the song. Come on. Come on. Come on. In love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in Falling in love with him over and over and, and over and over again. And he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me. 
Sing me over and over and over and over and over again. He is sweeter and sweeter as the day go by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I. Come on, sir, now. Fall in love with him. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. What he does for us over and over again. Because of that, we keep falling in love with him over and over. I want you to go back to verse 1 of chapter 2 of the book of Joshua. Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men. Remember 40 years ago, before, Moses sent out 12. 10 came back with a bad report. Now it's Joshua's turn to send some folk out. But he doesn't send 12. Because I think he learned his lesson. From the last time. Okay. Yeah. We don't need but two. <laughs> uh, we don't need the other 10. Uh, me and Caleb was good the first time. Uh, I, I, so I'm going to send out just two now. Brother Sam, I got two now. I don't need but two. So he sends out two. I just want you to know, sometime all you need is two. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other one up. David said you only need two. He said, surely, goodness and mercy. That's all I need is two. All right, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't need but two. If I got goodness and mercy, Sister Pat, I'm all right. I'm all right, see. All right, everybody needs some goodness and mercy today. That's all you need is two now. Just turn to your neighbor and say, 
All you need is two. That's all right. All right. Amen. Amen. That's all you need. As the young folks used to say a few, few, few months back, uh, deuces. Where my young people at? Deuces. 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 Everybody that do the deuces. Deuces. That's all you need. Because that's all you need is two. Amen. All right. Now, if this was the only mentioning of Rahab, we can look at it inside its Old Testament, just one mention. Uh, but God has a point to make to us because this is not the only mention. Okay? Uh, 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 uh. If we turn to Matthew chapter 1, don't lose, don't lose Joshua. Matthew 1, in the genealogy of Jesus, we're going to find something very interesting. Some of you know this already, but Matthew chapter 1, verse number 5. Solomon begot Boaz by who? Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David, the king David. Uh, the king begot Solomon to see the genealogy. God takes a prostitute who demonstrated enough faith in him to make her part of the genealogy of Christ. Y'all don't miss that now. Because if Rahab can make a list, that ought to be hope for some of us today. Because if she can get in, I know I got some hope this morning. Somebody because some of us all got a pass that, that, that if we all knew what it was, we all pull our hair out, be standing in the corner on our head. But God used that for his glory, and he can use your past the same way. He used your present, because some folk are still in some mess. I know it's quiet. Some folk are still in some mess. That God can still use for his glory. Ought to be some hope in there. Somebody ought to be shouting about that. You know, I can make a list too. But that's not the only mention in Hebrews chapter 11. Turn there. The hall of faith as it is sometimes described. Hebrews 11. Uh, we're going to find out some things. And again, our sister is mentioned. Uh, 1129, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea and on dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Let me tell you something real quick. God doesn't always take you to deep water for you to drown. He takes you to deep water so you can, he can drown your enemies. Hello, somebody. See, 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 the folk that are messing with you and causing you problems, see, sometimes you go to the deep water. It's, it's a struggle and it's a problem. But God has the waters parted for you. And so when your enemy think he can follow you in, Sister Carla, he, he going to realize that the water's coming down on him to drown them. He didn't take you to the waters to drown you. He took you to the high waters to drown them. So, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell, and we'll talk about those in a minute, after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot, the prostitute Rahab, did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with Peace, the enormous faithfulness of someone who knew about God, knew about his power, and began to believe in him. But that's not the only thing. Turn over one more book to the book of James, chapter 2. Now, in this particular portion of scripture, James is describing 
And in this case, he uses Abraham, who was declared righteous. So this particular section is about folk being declared, or the subject matter is the, the, the declaration of righteousness. Okay? And Abraham is the prime example. But Rahab gets in on it too. Verse 25, likewise was not Rahab the heart of also justified when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Three New Testament references to this woman makes it significant for us to look at. Okay, We've already seen how God chose to include her in the genealogy of Jesus. All right. Now she's declared righteousness. And the same will be true for you and me. Uh, Rahab is not known as the harlot in heaven. She's just Rahab. You won't be known for floozy Susie or whatever you was back in the day uh, when you get to heaven. Because that name won't be attached to you. Why? Because you have been declared righteous by God. And so all that stuff that people used to call you and still might call you won't be used in heaven. You just going to be Lucretia, Will, Richard, Carl, Floyd. Whatever you was won't apply no more. You won't have to say, I'm going to visit Rahab the harlot, because that won't be her name. Amen. And God has declared us all righteous. The beautiful thing about Rahab, and I hope you see in the text, that she forgave herself. See, one of the hardest problems, Floyd, is we get so hung up on what I done done that we can't forgive ourselves. God done forgave us a long time ago, but we won't forgive ourselves because we, we can't see our, our bring it to bring ourselves to that point. But God has already took away the guilty stain with the blood of Christ, see? And so uh, uh, we got to take a hold of that and let it, let it, let it do his work. Forgive yourself because God done done it already. Whatever it was you were doing, the blood of Christ it will clean it slate. It will clean it clean. Amen, y'all? Amen. Amen. Rehab can make it. So can we. I want you to go back to the text, Joshua 2. We're going to wrap this up. Joshua. This is interesting. We're going to see her faith now. All right? We're going to see her faith. Verse 12. Read that for me, Floyd. 212, if you can, if you got it. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Okay. Now, Rahab know what's about to happen. She know that God is about to clean up Jericho. And he's going to destroy everything. Okay. She says, I don't want him to destroy me. Okay. I've, ex I've exemplified the kind of faith in him that I don't want this to happen because I know what he's capable of. I know y'all about to tear this, this place down. I already know because I know what he did in the Red Sea. I, I know all the testimony of God. You are here to take out Jericho. And I, I, I beg you to spare me and my family. Now I need you to see something and I need you to hold on to it. Okay? Verse 15, then she 
let them down by a rope through the window of her house, which was on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall. Hold on to that. She dwelt on the wall. Her house was on the wall. Okay? All right. So when we get to chapter 6, okay, when the walls of Jericho fall down. I, I, I know we remember our Sunday school lesson uh, when the walls of Jericho fell down. Um, and in verse number 17 of chapter 6, after Israel had done all of the marching for the, the, the six days, the shouting, and, and on the seventh day, in verse 16, verse 17, now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, and it, it and all of whom are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers of that were sent. I wish I had time. I tell you, you know, she hung out the the the, the, the scarlet the scarlet cart, cut, cl cloth to indicate where her house was. Now remember, it's on the wall, okay? Now, when we look at verse number 20, read that for me, Floyd, 620 of Joshua. So the people shot when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpets, and the people shot with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Okay. Now, the wall fell down flat. Rahab's house is on the wall. Get the visual now. All the pieces of the wall fell, but her house. The wall fell down flat, but not hers. Okay? Her house stood as all the walls around her fell. Everything fell but us. See, God will crumble things all around you, but you'll still be standing. Hello, somebody. All right? And so everything crumbled. All the wall went down, but the house was all right. And if stuff starts crumbling around you, don't you faint at all, because you're going to stand too. When your faith is where it ought to be, everything else will be crazy. And you'll be all right. Okay? And everybody looking at you like, how are you surviving all this craziness? Because I'm on the wall. And everything else is falling down. But I ain't, because I'm on the wall. You see what I'm saying? And so, and so, you don't fret about it, Sister Goshen, because everything's crumbling at your feet. And you just step right on over it. Excuse me, y'all. Yes, sir. You're gliding your stride and a pep in your step. You don't let that stuff distract you. You're going to be all right. Because God can crumble stuff in at your feet, but keep you still standing. Some folk might be having some things happening today, but you're going to be all right. When you believe in the word of God and hold to his promises. I'm going to wrap this up in a second. Y'all hold on. Y'all all right? Okay. Now, not only uh, did our sister and her family survive, okay, look at chapter 6, verse 25. And Joshua spared Rahab the heart of her father's house and all that she had. So she dwelled in Israel to this day. So here's what the sister did. After all this that happened, she ain't leave. The Bible says she hung out with Israel. And she a Gentile, so I ain't going nowhere. What am I leave for? All God done done for me, where I'm going? I ain't getting where, where, where can I go but to the Lord? All right? So she dwelt with Israel. Okay? That ain't all she did, Lucretia. She hanging out 
with Israel. And then she met a man called, oh, she know about men now. <laughs> and she know that. And she, single sister now, she, she, she know all about that. And, and so she meets a man named Simon. We just read about him in, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. She met, meets Simon. But she didn't meet just any old man. She found a brother with a job. I say he had a job. She found a brother with a job. You see, and not only did he have a job, he had a good job, Brother Sam. He owned a construction company. Now, if I can get you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 51. Now, it won't do you a lot of good, all right? But I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta tell you what it really, really means. Second Chronicles, now I didn't say Corinthians, I said Chronicles, okay? First, second Samuel, first, second Kings, first, second Chronicles, all right? First Chronicles 2, 51. Brother Allen and I had a pretty good conversation earlier in the week because I was struggling to find a couple things. And when you get to chapter two, verse 51, the Bible says, Simon, the father of Bethlehem. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't do much for me, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, I took time that I didn't have this week, and I went on ahead and did a little dig, okay? Now, Proverbs, that was, that was 1 Chronicles 2.51, okay? Now, uh, uh, no, 1 Chronicles 2.51, okay? Okay, first, all right, now, okay? Now, I need you to turn to Proverbs real quick to show you something to tie this up. Now, Proverbs 2, and in verse number 2, no, verse number 4. If you seek her silver and search for her hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Why am I telling you to read that? Because some things you got to dig for. See, the, the sum of the word of God is like a hidden treasure. It ain't just laying on the ground. We want it to all be laid on the ground. So we want to pick it up. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Sometimes God wants us to do some digging. Okay? And so the word of God is, in some cases, a hidden treasure. So you got to do some work. You got to do some study. You got to do some digging. So I did it for you. So here's what the deal is. Salmon built Bethlehem. Brother owned the construction company. He, 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 hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it right. All right. So Rahab gets a hold of Solomon. He builds Bethlehem. Hello? Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. The city that Jesus was born in, Rahab's husband built. Rahab's tied to the genealogy of Christ who was born in Bethlehem. See, God know how to connect the dots, y'all. See, and we are everything all over the place, but when, when, when God starts connecting dots, it starts to make sense. Okay? So my man is part of uh, this great history of the word. You see why Rahab is one of my favorites? Uh, you see, sister, sister, sister had a little sense. Sister, sister realized where our help was coming from. Okay? And you ought to realize that too. I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. She had enough sense and faith to trust in what God had already demonstrated. And then it believed it and lived it up and became part of the genealogy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody, everybody have a herald today? Who does not have a herald? Tell Kobe, where you at, Kobe? Kobe, Kobe. There you go. Raise your hand if you don't have a herald. Everybody needs one. Everybody needs a herald. Then I'm going to shut down. Okay? Everybody needs a hair. If you don't have a hair, raise your hand. Over here. Okay. 
Open up your hair, please. To where our uh, meditation of scripture is and the sermon title. Everybody's got one? Who needs one? I need everybody to have one. If you don't have one, please raise your hand. Come on, Kobe. Move, move, move. Come on now, boy. You can run. Come on, you're an athlete. Let's go. Come on, man. Go steal second base. Okay? Go run down that ball in the outfield. Okay. All right. Let me show you how the Spirit of God works. This is, from, this is phenomenal. I, I would shout. The faith of Rahab. Look at the title. As I was preparing this lesson, you come. Uh, this is how I wrote it. The faith of Rahab. When I turned it into Janine to put in the, the herald, this is what I said. But if you look at Rahab, it's misspelled. It's Rahab. See, you didn't come for a religious experience today. You came for Rahab. That's what you came for. Ain't God good? Ain't the Holy Spirit nobody good? My mistake in misspelling turned out to be a sermon. My feet hurt. I shouldn't have done that. You came for rehab. Spirit of God is all right. I looked at that. I said, oh, the whole boy. Ain't, ain't. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? My misspelling turned out to be all right this morning. You're going to be here for real. Everybody's sick this morning. You're in the right place. You're here for real. Everybody got something going on. Everybody need a little help this morning. Quick to take off your sanctified looking face. Acting like you're all right. You need help like everybody else. Quit fronting. Quit being phony. You need rehab just like me. Gotta quit acting and playing church. You're sick. Everybody. Everybody. Sick with something. You came here and got some rehab in the name of Jesus. You lost in your sin. You need rehab. You a child of God and your faith has been lacking. You need rehab. You ain't been trusted in God like you need to. You need rehab. You haven't been faithful to the word of God like you need to. You need rehab. Uh, it, 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 the enemy's got you beat down and you're struggling. Life is hard and you need some rehab. You're in the right place. Praise God for being here this morning for some rehab in the name of Jesus. You're not a Christian. You come by having faith. Without faith it is impossible to plead. Okay. Having faith in what you've heard and what you know. Like Rahab, she knew some things before she met the spies. You've been studying with somebody. All right, now it's time to exercise what you know, what you've heard today. To put it all together and say, I'm ready for my Rahab. In the name of Jesus. Uh, believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That he died for your sins. He that believeth and, in, and is baptized shall be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But what? Have everlasting life. Change your life the way you live. Rahab changed. And became part of the great history of our Lord. Confess before this audience that you believe that God is God and besides him there is none. You believe that.
that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that he died for your sins. That you might have life.